Are you traveling to Europe this summer? I really can't say, but yes. Great. Just one thing. Don't be this person. Deciding how to dress on your trip to Europe is a big decision, bigger than you might think. And there are rookie wardrobe mistakes happening in each of these clips that scream tourist. In this video, I'm gonna give easy and practical style tips for women and men on how to not look like a tourist while traveling to Europe this summer. Tips that will help you not stand out so much as a tourist while also helping you be stylish and comfortable. But first, why might you not wanna stand out as a tourist while traveling? Number one is safety. Tourists are prime targets for pickpockets and scammers and they know exactly how to pick them out of a crowd. By making some slight changes to the way you would typically dress or style yourself, you can hopefully help mitigate any issues with safety or theft. Additionally, if you're a solo female traveler, it might be especially important to not draw attention to yourself out of safety concerns. Now on to the second reason. This statement could be potentially a bit polarizing, but there is something comfortable about blending in. If you truly want to experience a place like a local, the easiest place to start is by looking like one. Let's be real. You're unlikely to completely mask yourself from being spotted as a tourist. The hope is that with a little intentionality, you can avoid stereotypical faux pas and blend in a bit more than the other traveling folks around you. All right, let's dig into the specifics. Clothes are the bulk of what you're going to pack and the biggest area you can make adjustments and tweaks to accommodate a more European style. Now, I might break some hearts with this one, but the easiest and number one way to avoid standing out as a tourist in Europe is to not wear activewear. While athleisure is very popular in America, it's just not a thing in Europe, especially wearing leggings out in public. Now, I will still personally wear leggings on the plane for comfort, but when it comes to dressing and going out while I'm in Europe, if I'm going to wear pants, I will opt for jeans or a pair of comfortable linen type pants. These linen pants are a great option if you want the comfort of active wear, but want to look more elevated. For jeans, I would go for a pair that are free of holes or rips as that's not the standard style in Europe. Guys, leave the khakis at home and opt for a good pair of jeans or chinos as well. Avoid bright colors and loud patterns. Color palettes tend to differ between American and European fashion. Typically, Europeans tend to dress in more neutral options and use color as an accent versus the brighter, more bold options found in American fashion. I know this might dig into personal style a bit, but sticking to neutral colors will help you not stand out so much. And the added benefit is you can lean more into a capsule wardrobe type approach where mixing and matching the pieces in your wardrobe you pack will be much easier. I typically stick to the basics like blacks, browns, and tans, and maybe add a few more colorful items that can easily mix and match to create multiple outfits. A great example is a simple but quality structured blouse or tee that can be worn with jeans, pants, or skirts. These can be worn alone or they can be elevated with a cardigan or a jacket. These boxy pocket tees from Unbound Merino are the perfect example of an item that is neutral in color and can mix and match to create many outfits. I typically pack two of these shirts and can wear them multiple times on our trip. Unbound Merino is the perfect place to start if you're looking for clothing items, men or women, that are simple, stylish, and timeless. Their clothes are perfect staple pieces to pack for a trip to Europe because they're intentionally designed to be versatile. Unbound Merino avoids loud designs and logos in favor of classic pieces that will fit into any wardrobe and occasion. It also doesn't hurt that their clothes are made from premium merino wool, which is the perfect material for travel because it's temperature regulating, moisture wicking, and odor resistant. Also, it doesn't hurt that they're super soft and wrinkle resistant, a win-win. We love their clothing and have honestly been wearing it for years. You can use the code AWAYTOGETHER at checkout for 10% off your purchase. Thanks Unbound Merino for sponsoring this video. Another thing to consider along the lines of patterns and colors is logos. This is a common fashion faux pas that many Americans make in Europe. Don't wear your favorite college or pro sports team t-shirt. This is a surefire way to be pegged as a tourist. Guys, if your go-to is typically a graphic t-shirt, a great alternative is a solid color structured t-shirt or a lightweight collared shirt or button up. Also go easy on displaying luxury or designer logos if you have them, like a designer handbag. While you will see luxury stores all over European cities and you may even shop there, it's a much safer option to opt out of carrying your Louis Vuitton for a week to avoid potentially being targeted by a pickpocketer. Don't pack items that are overly sexy and revealing. When packing for Europe, think classy, not edgy. Avoid crop tops and really short dresses or shorts. 
It's common when traveling to Europe to want to visit some of their beautiful churches and memorial sites, and a lot of these places require or strongly suggest modesty. Think shoulders covered, longer skirts and dresses. Out of respect for the people and the culture, you should follow these rules. One tip that I've found helpful is to carry a lightweight scarf that I can wrap around my shoulders if needed. This is also a nice accessory to an outfit and can help keep you warm if you're traveling in late spring or fall when daily temperatures can drastically swing. Dresses and skirts are a popular option for women and personally, my favorite option to pack. I personally pack midi length skirts instead of shorts, and I'll pack a couple of dress options that can be versatile, like a simple black dress. Dresses are great because they're comfortable and stylish. Now for shoes and accessories. Footwear is probably one of the most important decisions and things that you will pack. You are going to likely be on your feet all day long and doing a lot of walking. First and foremost, please just don't wear heels. Don't even let the urge to pack them take over. Many of the historic sites you might see in Europe are on or near cobblestone streets, and while locals may wear heels, they've spent their whole lives learning to walk those bumpy, uneven streets in heels. Instead, opt for at least one pair of nice, casual sneakers. I recommend something neutral and or white. Do not wear running shoes. It's common in America to see people out and about in running active wear shoes. This just isn't the case in Europe. You will typically only see Europeans wearing athletic shoes if they're participating in athletics, not just walking the streets. If it's warmer weather, you might also want to pack a sandal. Note, I did not say flip-flop. Flip-flops are not common in Europe, and neither are chunky dad sandals or more athletic sandals like Chacos or Tevas. Instead, pack a more stylish sandal. I've mentioned Birkenstocks a lot on this channel because they have options that are stylish and comfortable. Your choice in bag that you carry when you're out and about can also be a telltale sign that you're a tourist. This one is sometimes a bit hard to get around to, depending on how much you need to carry around day to day. Utility, truly functional backpacks can be a dead giveaway that you're a tourist. So are things like belt bags. The best advice I have here is just to try to find some options that are a bit more aesthetic. Maybe a leather backpack if you need a backpack or something like a leather bum bag. I like this suede bag from Free People or this leather bum bag from Mandarin. Both look elevated but have plenty of space for everything I need to carry through the day. Now you're gonna want to avoid wearing baseball caps. I don't personally wear hats, but I do know that this is a thing for a lot of people. It's just not very common in Europe. Beyond how you dress, there are some stereotypical behaviors that typically American tourists do that make us stick out like a sore thumb. If you're looking for more ways to avoid standing out as an obvious tourist in Europe, go check out this video here. I hope this helps. If you have any other fashion faux pas you commonly see American tourists make, help everyone out and leave a comment below. Happy travels.